Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're with us, church family. We sit down with a super sweet lady, Miss Rachel Della Rosa. She is assistant to our children's pastor, Hannah Miner, and she has been in our church for about five years. Her story is super sweet about how God led her not only to work with kids, but also throughout her life as a, as a PK or a preacher's kid. Um, and how the goodness of God just led her all away. It's a very delightful conversation. We really hope you enjoy it. Um, let's jump right in. Well, hi, Rachel. How are you? Good. We're glad to have you. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Rachel serves underneath a mess. Hannah Minor, our children's pastor in the children's area. Do you primarily look over the preschool? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So nursery, toddlers, and the three to five-year-olds are my areas, your, your areas. My, little, little yeah, little. my little class, the little babies. My wife and I pretty much consider you the MacGyver of the youth ministry. <laughs> it's For those who don't do the youth ministry, there's always like things we need or things that pop up for like right. the, teaching the kids and stuff like that. And <laughs> Rachel's always like, got it. Like, just like, you need, got it. All right. Yeah, it's I'm the like, runner. Never a neck, like, and, and runner is the most polite understatement. For, like, it it's like amazing. We only do it limited, so I can't imagine how much. She's yeah. like, you need, you need how many TPs for the slumber party? Okay, I'll, got it. I'll, whip, I'll whip out 15. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was fun. The Christmas party, you baked the most beautiful cake. Oh. That was frozen. Yeah, it was. Sorry. <laughs> It was like this happy gore- birthday Jesus cake. The, this happy, it was so beautiful. And everyone's like, oh, look at that cake. So no one touched it. We made mm-hmm. sure the kids didn't go near it. Like, you don't, hey, <laughs> guess what's fun, kids? Hands off. All right. That is a beautiful cake. Let's not ruin it. And then we get to the moment where we go to cut it. <laughs> and it was, it was like, like oh, oh, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little cold still, guys. Okay. All right. So the best way to store a cake is in the freezer until you're going to use it, but you should take it out, you know. Five, six hours early before you're going to serve it. I forgot that cake in the freezer until about an hour before service. <laughs> so we that's, what like, was that's what it was for. And yeah. you want to know where that cake ended up? I know exactly where that cake ended, <laughs> ended up at the Flowers household. Nice. <laughs> Ryan's like, like yes. my kids ate on it for like a week. It was oh, gigantic. It looked so I good. Was like, uh, and it was super rich. It was very good. I was like, I can only have a tiny slice because it was <laughs> so rich. <laughs> we, were lo- we were like, we all wanted the cake. <laughs> we all, we were all in like, no, we want the cake too, kids, but we just can't get it. It's like, it looks so good. <laughs> well, at least oh. it was pretty. You got it to was admire a gorgeous it. Cake. <laughs> It was a gorgeous was. cake that no one, hey, we yeah. respected it. And then we're like, oh, right. I want to tear into this thing. Give me a shovel. Yeah. My kids had dessert for like a week and a half. Oh, good. So it got well, you, it got good. plenty of use yes. out of I'm it. I'm glad. But we're glad you're here and we're really glad you're part of our team. But we do want to hear kind of the backstory. I mean, that's what this is all about is having conversations. And mm. I didn't know, but you're a preacher's kid. You're a PK. Yeah, I'm a PK. Is that like Ooh. the minimum requirement to come to this church? Seems to be a like PK? It at this point. In this podcast, I feel like you have to be PK. Like yeah. it's unreal <laughs> right. the amount of PKs in this church. But yeah, I grew up, uh, my dad was the assistant pastor of a, you know, not a huge church, but a decent sized church. So I was literally not born at the church, but born into that church. Um, My parents served there until I was about eight. And then the Lord spoke to my dad to move and plant a church in little old Corsicana, Texas, middle of nowhere, never heard of it until the Lord told him about it. Um, So we packed up everything and moved to Corsicana and didn't have a place to live. We were just like, my dad was like, well, we're going to, the Lord, this is where we're supposed to be. So we're going to figure it out. <laughs> so I was telling um, Tanya that there was a time where we were living in our little storefront church building, eating ramen noodles and just enjoying life. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that was my early childhood in, in church. And how old were you when that was going on? I was, I was eight. I had just turned eight. Yeah. So me and my three older brothers were all of us, all six of us crammed into the there's little six small. Of you? Yeah, so there's, I have three older brothers, four kids, and then my parents. Oh, So okay. all six of us, the whole family. Like six siblings, I'm like, five, like oh, oh no, oh my gosh. No, so, <laughs> so yeah, we, we lived in the church building for a while, and then um, my parents were looking to buy a house or rent somewhere, but they couldn't find anything. Of course, Canada's a really small town, so you really have to look for a while. <laughs> um, so we ended up that summer... We lived in a motel for a while, all six of us. So, yeah, it was interesting. That's that's how my dad planted. That's how we got our, our church. That's how we planted that church. So I love asking PKs because they're the only ones that can answer this question, <laughs> is that you – there's the horror stories of PKs, and then there's the ones that seem to just blossom. Not blossom is the right word, but just, like, the love of God is on them. 
And I'm always like, was was there ever a on off switch for the, your 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 example of a faith from your parents who were like mm-hmm. ministering and then had to be parents? Like, was there? Like, I feel like when there's a huge separation of how someone preaches and how someone walks, mm-hmm. you get the, the the strays necessarily. But I don't know. I don't mean to load that question. But I mean, no, I know what you mean. But I had. They, I mean, I'm so blessed that my parents are were very transparent and still are. I mean, they were the exact same way at church and at home, which was even maybe kind of more scary when you're growing up because it's like if you said something at church and you uh, like it's going to happen at home. Um, so I think for me, I I was blessed that I had a very consistent. Like my parents were consistent. Whatever they their their Christian walk was the same as their natural life walk. Perfect. I mean, it was the exact same. They were the same all the time. So. I never had that weird feeling of like keeping up appearances type of thing. Now from outsiders looking in, because that's a question that I always got asked, like in in school from teachers, they'd be like, Oh, that's a PK kid. That kid's going to be bad. She's going to, you know, (laughs) we always had that. that People always would say that. And I didn't understand. Like, I don't get it. Like I'm a good kid. Yeah. Well, why would you just assume assume that of me? But now I will say that, um, not to talk bad about my brothers, but, it does depend go. on the <laughs> <laughs> some dirt's coming out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it definitely depends on the child, and like we, you know, all four of us were raised in the exact same home, exact same parents, exact same style of being raised, but we all have way different adult lives now. Not not in a bad way necessarily, but totally different. Like my. Um, my brothers are not in ministry per se, like, um, they're believers, you know, but they're not, they don't do what I do mm-hmm. and which is not a bad thing. It's just, you know, different. Sure. So, uh, did you get saved at a young age or how did your <laughs> salvation, oh, you <laughs> laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. The Lord has a sense of humor. <laughs> good. Yeah. So I guess whenever you're a PK, you grow up in the church, you grow up hearing, about salvation all the time. So you have that, you all automatically have that base knowledge of what salvation is and what it looks like. And I think for me, I I thought about salvation that it was going to be like something dramatic. It was going to happen in my life. Like I was going to have a near death experience. And (laughs) and then, then I would come to Jesus. It'd be my come to Jesus moment. Uh, But that is not what happened. And it's just funny how the Lord uses just the most random stuff to touch us and reach us. But anyway, I went to the movies with my mom. She was in college and she had um, a like opportunity to get extra credit. So she w- they had the, this list of e- extra credit things that she could do. And one of them was going to see this movie. And so she was it was um, like an ethics class or something like that. So anyway, she was like, do you want to come see this movie with me? And I'm like, sure, I'll go to the movies. So we went to go see it's the movie's called The Knowing. And it stars Nicolas Cage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why does that sound so familiar? Yeah, so I, we went and saw the movie. And I don't know if it's because he's a PK in the movie that I related to it so much. Because in the movie, his dad is a pastor. I, I don't know what okay. denomination or any or whatever. But his dad's a pastor. And the whole, like, the whole conflict of the movie is that he... His dad wants him to get saved, but he's like, no, like, this is not for me. This is what you do, dad. But, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not interested. And he's a grown adult at this point. And he has a son. And so anyway, it's like it's a sci fi movie. Like the world is ending and his son is getting all these weird signs and stuff. And he's like just watching his son. This stuff happen. And anyway, I don't even know at what point in the movie (laughs) that I'm like in the dark theater crying in the back of the movie theater. Like, I don't even know why at this point. But anyway, at the end of the movie, uh, once the world is ending, he finally goes to his dad and he's like, Dad, you were right this whole time. You were right. And at that moment, I'm like, "Ah," just bawling in the movie theater, trying to hide it from my mom. (laughs) Because I'm like, she's going to be like, what's wrong? Anyway, we leave the movie theater and she's like, so what'd you think of the movie? And I'm like, "Ah, I don't want to go to hell. Like, literally, like, (laughs) oh my God. (laughs) And she's like, what? What, what do you mean? It's dramatic. I'm like, it was, yeah, I, I'm an emotional person, but I, so I like was just melting down. And so on the way home from the movie theater, my mom led me through the salvation prayer and that's how I got saved. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's like, I thought you were going to say like Nicolas Cage is such a captivating actor. Oh gosh, no. no that's, his, what I, that's what makes it funny. Unbelievable because, acting. You know, he's a thespian of thespians. I don't even like Nicolas Cage. So it's like, 
Like, the so Lord I was wanted. like, oh, you know the Lord's working. It's like, oh, I'm going to use Nicolas Cage to yeah, get you yeah, saved. Yeah, little yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah. Oh it's my a gosh. miracle. <laughs> so that was how old were you? I was 15. That was like, what, sophomore year of college? Yeah. High school? Oh, yeah. High school? I would think it was the summer right before my sophomore year. Cool. Yeah. Now, did you like, were you on fire then or was yeah, it? Yeah. Like, I mean, from that moment on. Really? So I, I mean, I lost friends in high school. It was, it was real for me. Like wow. that was my moment and I've not strayed since then. Like it's That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and about, you know, being a PK of all the things that you would think would have gotten me saved <laughs> of all the church services that I attended. It oh was, my it gosh. was Nicholas Cage. It was Nicholas Cage <laughs> in the movie theater. In the movie theater. I just like going to your, going to your dad like, oh. We're preaching like that dude right there, boy. Yeah. The knowing. That's yeah. what did it. Yeah, that's, what, that's did what did it, it for me. That's awesome. Yeah. And so like you like complete 180 in high school. Yeah. Totally One, changed. Totally 180. I mean, I tried to keep those friendships, but you can't I mean you can't. When you're different. You can, you but can. you just lose your faith. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? And I, it wasn't an option for me. So we slowly I mean, I kept those acquaintances, but we slowly drifted apart. You know. And this carry on, like did you go to I'm so you went to college? Yeah, I did. So yeah, in college, uh, <laughs> And then, you know, we, my, I had older brothers. So when my older brother, Shane, um, got saved, we just kind of hung out. We, I hung out with my brother and his friends that were Christian. So, yeah. And then we um, did ministry. I was on the praise team at my dad's church for the whole time I was there until I left. And yeah, we just kept on going. <laughs> what did you go to college for? Um, so I have an interesting college story too. So my, Originally, I was a scientist. I wanted to. I studied epidemiology and public health, all this very sciencey things, biology. Um, and I graduated with my bachelor's. That's what my bachelor's degree was. And I thought I was going to work in microbiology and all this like fancy science. Sounds stuff exciting! In a oh hospital. yeah, it was very exciting. Yeah, I remember having conversations with you. You're yeah. like, I'm in epidemiology. And, and I was so excited, and I love. I still I love that, but nothing would work out. I applied to a thousand places, interviewed places, nothing worked out. And so, like, as a last resort, I was like, well, I guess I could go teach. <laughs> I guess I could do that, teach science. So that's what I did. I, I went and got my master's in education and taught science in middle school. And then I was like, whoa, wait a minute. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, yeah. I, was, I just went and got my master's. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, I got my master's. No, it's so casual. <laughs> like, I just so, so flippantly, casual. like, what did you do today? Uh, third PhD. I mean, it's kind of, no. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a that's tough a, morning. Oh, that's, a weighty, that's a weighty degree to get. That's what I'm saying. Master's in yeah. teaching? I was kicking and screaming at a bachelor's, and you're like, I just went and did my master's. <laughs> well, I mean, it was kind of like the only other option. Otherwise, it was go work at Whataburger. <laughs> so, I mean, I was like, I got to do something that's going to... You know. But you felt like that was somewhat of the Lord leading you yeah. into teaching? Yeah, so I had worked, I mean, I worked with kids um, at our church, and I worked with kids, I tutored when I was in college, and I always, and I enjoyed it, I enjoyed doing it. Um, I tutored at our high, my high school that I went to, um, once I graduated, I tutored there. And then even in my public health program, we were doing research with kindergartners, so I was always with kids at all times <laughs> for some reason, and I didn't understand why. Um, and so that's why I kind of like, well, I'll go get my master's in education because I know I can I can work with kids. I've done us a lot. Right. So that was another way the Lord was like, go go this way, go this way, slowly like nudging me in the direction of working with kids. Um, was this now? Where were you living at in this time? Okay, so I was my family's from Course Canada. I went to college in Tarleton, so I was in Stephenville. Um, Stephenville? Do you know where these places are? <laughs> I love it. Mr. Oh California, no? I have no clue. I'm like, all right, yeah, sounds nice. Uh, okay. Lovely. Beachfront property, I'm assuming? Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Try <Stephenville>. cattle. <laughs> right, like, ah. They ride cattle to class? No, I'm just west, kidding. So, <laughs> yes, it's west. So go west, and you'll find Stephenville. Yeah, out past Weatherford. All right. And, yeah. Uh -huh. Sounds lovely. Continue. It's I'm sorry. It's in the middle of nowhere. All right. Like, if you leave your house when it's nighttime, it's dark because there's hardly no lights over oh. there. It's very, it's the kids in the country. Love it. Pretty much the only thing there is the school. So, which is another story. Like my experience there with church and my faith was, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it was a test of my faith. Well, I guess it was. I drove home two hours to go to church because I just could not find a church over there. There wasn't a place for the yeah. whole Every year. Every Sunday you drove two hours? Yeah, we did have a church that was like affiliated with our youth because um, I was in Chi Alpha. It's like the, it's kind of like Baptist Student Ministries, kind of. It's a similar, it's like a college through Assemblies college of God. College ministry, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So I was a member there and we were, I was working on getting into leadership in that program. And uh, we have a church that kind of like hosts um, our things and whatever we want to do. You know, we did our class, our leadership classes at their church, but it just never clicked for me. Like I just was, it didn't, I didn't feel the spirit of God there. <laughs> I, don't know, well, I, mean, I hope it doesn't sound bad, but it's just. It doesn't. No, no. I'm kind of relating to your story mm-hmm. some because uh, once I got saved, I thought, I thought for sure I was going into kids stuff. Like I'm like, oh yeah, kids, I can do that. But then the Lord spoke to me about nursing school, which is a science degree. So mm-hmm. it was almost just the opposite of you. Like I was like, I was like, I guess I can walk into a science degree yeah. and do that. And then, but then, <laughs> what'd you do? Science degree? You know, <laughs> no, just woke up on a Monday, decided Tuesday. Decided so you know, like, to go to nursing. Like oh my gosh. No, but I felt like the Lord told me to go to nursing school. I was like, nursing school? Like what in yeah. the world? And then. But it's kind of same with you. Like, mm-hmm. like I guess I could teach, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, but then when I was at college, same experience. I connected with the college ministry there, and I was like, "Is this all? This is as deep as we're going." Okay, yeah. all right. This is really this is it. This mm-hmm. is all we got, and that was yeah. that was all they had. And not that it was bad. I'm sure they ministered to people. I'm sure they yeah. had a lot of salvations. But just to be in a different place where you are hungry for the word and mm-hmm. hungry for the things of God probably wasn't the same yeah Yeah. it wasn't and it was it was dry just like almost depressing and I I left there early like I was supposed to stay there another six months longer than I actually did but I I just I couldn't be there anymore (laughs) I stayed a student at Tarleton but I went I moved back home for my last like few months of my bachelor's degree and did it online I was like I can't like I just don't like I don't feel I don't know. I just didn't feel God there. (laughs) And it's hard to say, but I'm not, my whole experience was not bad. Like I've met, I met lifelong friends and actually I met a friend that led me to heritage at Tarleton. Really? Yep. Wow. (laughs) I know. Right. (laughs) So I was there on purpose and it wasn't an accident. Sure. If I didn't go there, I would have never gotten here. Wow. So the, um, my friend, LaVondria Williams, or our foreman now, her parents go to Sorry. Heritage, She's Tony yeah. and Rhonda Jordan. Yeah. yeah, so I met her in Chi Alpha. That's where we met because she was also in that student ministry. Uh, we became really close friends, <laughs> traveled all over the United States together just for fun. And what, that's another story. I don't know how we got the money to do that in college, but <laughs> somehow we made that work. But anyway, life. she became a lifelong friend, and I moved up here. Once I decided, you know, I'm going to go into teaching, I'm going to go get my master's degree at the Tarleton campus in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to Fort Worth. Okay. And I had been looking for a church. I I moved up here in August or September 1st is when I moved up here. And I had been visiting churches all the way up until like January of of the next year of 2018. And I just couldn't, like I visited churches and people were so sweet, but I just did not, I'm like, where's the spirit of God? It's like, oh, it just feels so like dry. I don't know. Um, so I visited one, two, three, four, four churches before I um, found this church. But I texted her and I was like, you know, the Lord just po- it popped in. It, I remembered, he brought to my remembrance that she had said, you know, she's from here. Her parents go to a church that she went to and youth and all that stuff. And so I texted her and she was like, yeah, it's Heritage of Faith. And I'll text you the address. And I was like, okay. And that was like on a Tuesday or a Monday. And so I ha- didn't go to my first service that I went to was a Wednesday night service. <laughs> so you know you're serious. Yeah. Right? yeah that's how you know. It's the most recurring theme in this, in this podcast. <laughs> it, is, it really is. You're missing out on Wednesdays, people. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday night service. Um, I was single. I didn't really know anybody up here. So I came by myself. I walked in the doors and it was the pre-service prayer, which is like, you know, everybody's kind of in their own area praying, but um. I don't know if someone still is at the front praying too. I don't know how it goes now. But anyway, at the time, <laughs> <laughs> at the time, I walked in and immediately as I walked through the door, I hear people speaking in tongues. I'm like, whoa, this is a real thing in other churches besides my dad's church. Like, <laughs> like I was just so amazed immediately. And I'm like, oh my God, people are like, the Holy Spirit's here. People are speaking in tongues. So, it's literally, like a low bar, literally but I like since it. that, <laughs> <laughs> but God is here. It is. This is my church. I, I know He's here. He has to be here. So literally, yeah. since I have not visited any other churches since then, since that Wednesday night, I have been at Heritage of Faith. 
Really? Yeah. Was, and was I'm assuming this is Pastor Justin was still yeah was it was preaching, still right? Pastor Justin it was I mean it oh, wasn't yeah. yeah it wasn't that long ago <laughs> 2018 yeah but a yeah. lot of January. things have happened you kind of plugged right in and yeah. jumped into was it preteens so right away so I attend yeah right well no my first place I served was bookstore I was in the oh, bookstore okay so that was my way of like getting to know people because I'm not a very like out there person I'm a I'm a backstage person. And that's okay. That's just how I am. Uh, a lot of people don't know me because of that. So that's what, that was my way of like meeting people was the bookstore. So I met a lot of cool people. Um, and I, I did that for a while, but the Lord kept bugging me. He kept saying, where you need to work with kids. You need to work with kids, work with kids. And I, and I really put it off for a long time, like months. And after one service, I don't even know what the Lord used to speak to me at that time, but I was super convicted. I was like, okay, I just need to do this. So I, at the time it was Sam yeah. was the <laughs> youth leader. And so I went to her and I was like, hey, I'm supposed to be serving in youth. I thought at the time it was supposed to be in youth. So they got me in. I started serving in youth. I was doing pro presenter over there. Um, and then I started doing pro presenter in the main service. So I've kind of been a little bit of everywhere. Um, and then once I had my daughter, Abigail, I stepped back from everywhere. Cause I mean, I had a newborn, so it's kind of hard to show up to, to Saturday night practice for pro presenter <laughs> with the newborn. And so I stepped down for a while. And then after a while, I, I don't know, a few months or something, Abigail was like six months old or something. Uh, Pastor Nett called me or texted me and was like, hey, can you meet with me and, and Pastor Justin um, ne like next week or something like that? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm in trouble. What did I do? And I said to the principal's office. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm going in blind. She didn't tell me what we we're going to talk about. We're just she's like, come up, come up to the church and meet with me and bring the baby so I can see the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, honestly, it was it was a little nerve wracking. So I get there and we're like just catching up because I hadn't talked to them in a while. Um, and then we had, you know, some small talk. And then Pastor Justin's like, well, we called you in because we were praying and we've been praying for a while. And we feel like the Lord is telling us to ask you if you would be interested in being the assistant to Miss Natasha in children's ministry. And they were like, oh, no. and, you know, they gave me all that information. I was like, okay. They're like, just pray on it and let us know. And I was telling Tanya that I left thinking, oh, I don't, I don't even have to pray on it. I already know <laughs> that's where I'm supposed to go. I already know. Um, so that's where I've been so since then. Been. Yeah, and a year were, and a half. You served under Natasha, and now yeah. you're serving with uh, with Miss Hannah. Hannah. Yeah, that's correct. So yeah. you've been you've been the the steady hand there mm -hmm. as that transition has happened. Yeah, but you did kind of gloss over, like you know, there was a uh, some more things that happened. So you have been, so you were single all the way through high school and you got here, but now you have a baby. So can you yeah. connect oh, the yeah. dots? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a big chunk of <laughs> my so life us, right now. Tell us what happened in small groups. Yeah. Okay. So one day, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not kidding. It's really happened. We <laughs> were going to <laughs> <laughs> Penny and Kevin Joy's house. Oh my gosh, house. the Joy's. Yeah, the Joy's. And, and we're kind of like their, their babies now because we met at their, at, their house that's where we met that's where I met my husband and so he had been going to that thrive group for a while and I, I was still pretty new to the church so I, I think my first thrive group was maybe in I got to heritage in January so my first thrive group was probably in February and so I mean I had only been at the church for about a month <laughs> and I get to thrive group and I went with Lavandria and a couple of my other friends were up from Stephenville visiting me and so we all went like me like so five college girls at Thrive Group. So, I mean, he had options, but. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, sorry. It's <laughs> great. So anyway, I mean, I saw him and I was, you know, I was, you know, you're attracted to someone, you know, you're not just gonna right. be interested in someone because how holy they are, which I mean, you are too. Maybe but. you aren't. <laughs> Sinner. <laughs> I mean, the first thing that attracted me to my husband was his look. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That. That's how you, yeah. you know. That's how you. Anyway, so I, but at the time he was in a relationship with someone else, and so I was, I was like, whatever, that's not for me. Then immediately, I'm like, it's, the thought is gone. Um, and so maybe a couple months later, I was wanting to go to Thrive Group again. I hadn't gone, and so I found him on Facebook, and I messaged him, and I was like, Hey, when's the next Thrive Group? 
And so that's how we start talking. And so he told me the next Thrive Group we went, I mean, not together, but we, I went to Both Thrive attended. Group and saw him again. Yeah. Um, and then ever since then, we like, we're just chatting on Facebook, <laughs> like seeing each other at church, you know, small talk or whatever. Um, and then this, that summer of that same year when I was off, cause I'm, a, I was a teacher. So when I was off of work, we started hanging out. We would go to the gym and work out together and just like, is he out. still in a relationship this time? <laughs> No, not at that All time. Right, I was like, no, oh, no, no. Shit, you no, suspicious. No, no, no. At no, that time, I mean, once we once I asked him about um, Thrive Group, I think he was he was already not in that relationship anymore. So, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I know he's like, don't be promoting that. I'm like breaking up heavy homes over here. You know? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 none of that, none of that. Um, so we yeah we hung out that whole summer, got really close, and he, he proposed that same year in November. How long have you been? Dating at that point in time? Like five months. That's my dude. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah, he proposed in, like, yeah, it was from June to November, so about five months. That's awesome. Yeah, and then we were married the next April, so in five more months, we got married. Ten months? Yeah, so <laughs> ten months span of time, and then. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you know, you know, they say. Once you know, you yeah. know. So, I mean, our whole relationship is heritage, <laughs> was heritage. So I'm trying to think of like so like he was going to the joys, but he's he's just going like like that's such a fun I, I love the joys. Yeah, like that's I so sweet. And I actually met your husband before I met you. I met him yeah. off off church Usually property. That's how it goes. Yeah, right? <laughs> I met him somewhere and he's just I'm like, oh my god, that's the he's the usher. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he's the nicest guy. He's always I'm like, if you guys don't know her husband, you've probably been <laughs> seated by him. He's a lovely right. he's a lovely yes. gentleman. Yes. Right. Um but that's so that's, that's such a cool thing that that's how you guys met. Yeah. Like, like I completely experienced through heritage. Mm-hmm. Literally the whole way through. <laughs> yeah. And so. So now instead of plugging Wednesdays, now we're plugging life groups. Thrive, thrive group. Groups. Go to yeah. Thrive Group. You might meet your soulmate. No, I'm just kidding. Take that eHarmony. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thrive. They need to have an so app we, for Thrive. It, <laughs> a Thrive app. Thriving app. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that. Yeah, that's not the heart of the Thrive Groups, but you're not the first couple. I mean, we've had some weddings at Thrive Groups. We've really? had some other mm-hmm. relationships blossom in Thrive Groups. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, it's a good place to fellowship with yeah. like-minded believers. Yep. And you never know what will happen after that, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, uh, it's funny that you said that you you met him before me, because, mm-hmm. I mean, now I'm, a lot of services, I'm in HK, in Heritage Kids, so I don't get to meet a lot of the new people, but when I do meet people... They're like, oh, like, how long have you been here? I'm like, well, like five years. <laughs> I'm like, but my husband is the usher, the Hispanic usher that's, you know, kind of short. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know him. So that's how I introduce myself now because everybody See, knows who nice. he is. Yeah. Everyone knows him. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But now you have more than one kid. Now you guys have a couple babies. Yeah. Right? Literally two. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we, we, Abigail, we had planned, you know, we were married for a year. We, we decided to wait a year, get to know each other more because 10 months is not very long to get to really know somebody. I mean, we we had the, you know, our basic, our basis, you know, we both love God. We both love serving, all that stuff. So that that's what, you know, connected us. But then you got to learn the person that you're about to spend the rest of your life with. So we took that first year. We're going to just spend time together, learn each other, and then we'll, you know, have kids later. And that's what we did. And so we planned. Abigail was planned. <laughs> My son Abel was not. He came very quickly after Abigail. So there's like, they're less than a year apart. Right. So they're like 362 days apart. Right. So we had a busy year that year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, people always, I, okay, so I am a twin mom, right? Mm-hmm. And so people, like twin moms have a big deal. Like, like if they're not really twins, they're not really twins. It's not mm-hmm. the same experience. But you know what? It's a different kind of hard yeah. when you have two within one year. Mm-hmm. Like when they're, they're at different stages, they're at different developmental yeah. places, they take different <laughs> nap times. At least mine, it was like wham, wham, you're doing mm-hmm. the same thing because you are doing the same yeah. thing. It is hunger time, it is nap time, <laughs> it is bedtime. Everybody's on the same schedule. But you're the second family that's come through that had babies super close. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's hard. That's just Yeah, hard. it's like one's, yeah. you know, one's, here, yeah. You can't do anything. They're mm-hmm. just a ball of mush, and then the other one's like darting here and here and there, you know, flipping over the dog water and trying to eat dog food and uh, trying to just do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. Uh, I mean, now now that they're both walking, it's like we have we have other issues because yeah. the two year olds like wanted to boss the one year old, and yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It's fun though. <laughs> the Lord gives you grace for these crazy seasons really in your does. life. Yeah. I'm yeah. in youth ministry though. Yeah, Explain that. That's exactly what like, you Like I love kids. Kids are awesome. Mm-hmm. Um I've never had that pull to like, oh, I want a kid. I've never have it. But like other people's kids, I think that that kid's so cool. Those kids are so cool, and I see the value in them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Obviously, you serve in our kids ministry. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. I, well, it's. I think the the like like the youth ministry is such a sweet ministry mm-hmm. because you when you see a little kid grasp onto a concept of faith or an idea that just rocks their little world, that is you're like that is so amazing to watch because you're watching it in real time. Their yeah. faith grow, like them hold on, like develop something to hold on to that's probably going to be a significant faith moment for the rest of their life. Mm. But that's the beginning of the the absolute foundation. And that's why it's so fun to work with them. Yeah. However, when they're crying and they're not, like, all that stuff, <laughs> hand them back. <laughs> You're like, you have a blessing. In I your go, arm right there. Your faith is stronger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're a blessing. You are a blessing. But that's what, what you do. In the, that's why I love what you guys do in the youth ministry. Like people don't know, like you get there early and you pray over that. Like mm-hmm. there's prayer for these kids. There yeah. is, conscious thought of faith that we're going to, what we're going to do for these kids where God's going to meet them. It's not a joke. It's, it's, it's taken to a really exceptional level at this church. It's, yeah. it's really impressive. Yeah. No, I mean, I like what you said about, uh, you see, like you're able to see that spark when they, when they get something, because me as an adult, those are the things that I remember that have led me, you know, even to teaching, I, you know, I got to teaching because I couldn't do anything else because that's all I could do at the time. But what kept me was getting to see, you know, you know, from the school side of it, when a student grasps something, you know, when they finally, when it finally clicks, like that joy that they get mm-hmm. and just like, they're like so proud of themselves. It's the same thing with children's ministry. When, once they, once that clicks and once they, whether it's the love of God, once they really, really get to see it and experience it for themselves, they're going to carry that for the rest of their life. It's going to shape their relationship with God, you know? Mm-hmm. So and I like that. I like what you said. It's great. Yeah, It is. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It is it's beautiful. A beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things we say a lot in this, in this church house, which I know you've heard before because um, I think making winners in life from the start is kind of a catchphrase, even in the kids mm-hmm. ministry. Right. Mm-hmm. So making winners in life is our motto. Um, when you hear that and you think about your role and your life and your experiences, what does it mean to be a winner in life? To have love, to be able to give love. I think that's that would probably sum it all up for me is just loving people. Because, <laughs> okay. I mean, you can't, you can't win them. You can't win them unless you love them. You can't win. I don't, I don't know. Like, you have to have to show them love <laughs> so, but I can't even I can't even really fully Great put it answer. into words there's, there's you're good yeah, yeah that's, that's, um, just but I think I think we kind of romanticize love you know but it it's work it's like you said showing up early preparing putting snacks out you know just the small things that show like that I care about my or like you know the teachers in three to five or the teachers in the nursery that I care enough about you you know, to put snacks or lunch, breakfast on the table for you before we pray or have, I don't know, coloring sheets printed out for you so you don't have to print them yourself. I don't know. Just the small things of yeah. showing that you love people. And what I love about serving in kids ministry and probably in other areas too, but those little things in the kingdom of God are not little. They're mm-hmm. all, they're all yeah. impact the kingdom of God. Like the preparation you put into making sure the classrooms are ready so the teachers have time to pray mm-hmm. and be led by the Holy Spirit as they're that that is worth the same as what happens at the pulpit. Yeah. You know, and I think people lose uh lose some understanding of that along the way. Like mm-hmm. when you're serving in church, if you're taking the trash out, that has just as much kingdom yeah, significance as preaching the preaching the message yeah. or playing the worship, you know, being on the worship team or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's a great answer. Like loving yeah. can take all those forms. Mm-hmm. So it's a good answer. No, that was, <laughs> as I was just saying, I'm like, yeah, that's it's incredibly <laughs> well said. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Well, this was awesome. Yeah. Like, it's so fun. Like, I love this podcast. We get to have too. conversations <laughs> with people. You just don't get to do it. Like, mm-hmm. even though we would work close together, we've never had a chance to sit down yeah. and just, like talk. So this has been so fun. And like, thank you so much for doing this with us. This was amazing. I'm sure people are going to hear this and be 
completely blessed by it because it is such an awesome to know that you're there doing these things is so amazing your story is awesome but you're amazing thank you so much for joining us all those listening just remember that we release a new conversation every friday um we're having a great time here and just thank you so much and we'll see you next week